Welcome once again, folks. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today we're going to be reviewing... Let me get my camera a little straightened up here. It does, I guess it doesn't matter. We're going to be reviewing The Burning Stone by Jack White. This is a series of three reviews where I review a different book in my collection called the Burning Stone. I have three books in my library with the same title, The Burning Stone, all written by different authors. So we're going to be reviewing all of these three books in a row on the channel. So this is the first Burning Stone. You'll have to guess which other two are the Burning Stones coming up. That's a mystery, but I got them in my library. I don't have any other. Well, okay, I've got two novels titled The Gold Coast. One by Elmore Leonard, one by Nelson DeMille. Maybe when I re review those, I'll review them as a, as a twin pair also. But The Burning Stone by Jack White. I've got another Burning Stone novel coming up and another Burning Stone after that. So look forward. Jack White, I just bought this actually. Before I bought this, I only had two Burning Stone books in my collection. Now I got this third one. Jack White, The Burning Stone. What is it? It is book number one, it is, and it just came out. It's the latest one he wrote, and it's actually book number one in his, in his what's the name of the series? The Dream of Eagle series, the Camula, or in Canada, it's called the Dream of Eagle series. In America, it's called the Camulod Chronicles. And it's now, it's, it used to be a nine book series. Now it's a 10 book series because this is the prequel to all of them. And he just finished it. So we've got The Sky's Burning Stone, book one, the prequel that just came out. None of these were written in order, by the way. I mean, he was rating like book two and then book eight and then book three and then book. I mean, it's just all. But the actual reading order of them is The Burning Stone is the book one, which just came out. The Sky Stone is book two. The Singing Sword, book three. Eagle's Brood, four. Uther, five. The Saxon Shore, six. Fort at River's Bend, seven. The Sorcerer, eight. The Lance Thrower, nine. And the Eagle, ten. And this is the Camulod Chronicles, if you're following in America. The Dream of Eagles, if you're following in Canada. It is Jack White's epic 10 volume masterpiece retelling of the King Arthur legends. Gosh, three minutes into the video and I finally got out what the whole book was about. Uh, you know, we always review the covers. This cover was done by, um, questionable. We don't know who this cover was done by, but it's cool. It's like a, it's like a, it's a stone and it's burning. What is the stone and why is it burning? We'll get into that. We'll get into that. The Camulod Chronicles, 10 volumes all about King Arthur. Well, to be honest, the first volume and the second volume and the third volume are not about King Arthur at all. There, this one is about Quintus Verus, one of the great, great grandfathers of King Arthur, where he, this is the story of his adventure from the Roman Empire up through the lands of uh, Germ Germania and Gaul and into southern Britain where he sets up camp. And one of the great things about this whole series is it's, it's a King Arthur story told from the perspective as if there was never any magic. What would it have been like if there was an actual King Arthur but there was never any magic but all of the characters were there like King Arthur, Merlin, Uther, Mordred, Guinevere, Lancelot. What if all the characters were there and all the mythology was there? Like, what if the Holy Grail was there? What if the magic sword was there? What if Merlin's magic was real? Or not real, but what if it was, what if people thought Merlin was a real magician? But all of it was just like, there was none of that. It was just like natural phenomena describes all of the magic that's out there. For instance, the burning stone and the sky stone which open up our series. The Burning Stone is a meteor that Quintus Verus sees fall from the sky. And it lands and, they, and, and, and he sees the explosion. It takes them days and days to search out where this thing lands. But when they find out where it lands, this thing, and you can imagine just being in the Middle Ages 
and watching something like that stream come burning out of the sky, right? And, and shake the ground and cause a big fireball and explosion. And, and you don't even know what it is. And then you go, well, we got to go figure out what the, that thing was, right? And so they go out and they find that it was, you know, they don't, I mean, they're just mystified by everything, right? They're mystified by everything. They don't know what they've witnessed or what they're going to find. And then they get out there and they see the aftermath of well, what is obvious to us, the reader, a meteor hitting the um, ground and all the trees. There's like a big, huge, I mean, there's a big crater in the earth and, and the trees are just busted and thrown like matchsticks and they've rained back down. And then uh, outside of the crater, the trees have just been laid down on their sides in a perfect formation. And they just, they don't know what in the creation has happened, right? But it is the start of our supernatural phenomenon that carries on through all these other books. Because as we find out, as we read the other books, that that meteor is found and they start to create weapons out of it. Because and, and it's, it's got a different met, met, metallic property in it than uh, any of the rocks around southern England that they've got. And so then this... And then we just, so now you can understand where, you know, this crater, crater creates a lake and there's still parts of that meteor down in there. And in these later books, the sword Excalibur is forged, like, and, it, and it's forged from the rocks in that lake. And there's a lady of the lake and there's, um, and there's different stones. And, and, and as we go through, and I'm going to reread all of these because they are magnificent. And we're going to go through and we're going to see how Merlin is perceived to be this wildly crazy, talented magician who can do all this supernatural stuff when really he's just manipulating chemistry as they knew it at the time. And then we um, find out how the sword and the stone, the lady and the... We, we get everything is explained down to the detail people think it's magic but as you're reading it and as we're reading it throughout all these books we can we can clearly see that there's no magic involved that all of these things from the lady of the lake to the sword excalibur and the metals it was forged from and to the rock and when they stick it into the rock and they nobody can pull it out but but for arthur it makes sense he, he, it's just so clever but we, i won't get into any of that until we get to the because this book Oh, and then the Holy Grail, it all, all of it comes into play. And Lancelot, and Guinevere, and Mordred, and all of the characters are in the books. And it's ten volumes. Ten volumes. This one is about Gaius, not Gaius, but Varys. Oh, what the hell is his name again? Quintus Varys, the great-great-great-grandfather of King Arthur. And then the Sky Stone, which deals again with the meteor. The Sky Stone is about Gaius Varys, his great-grandfather. And then we get into the Saxon Shore, which is about his um, grandfather and the birth of his father, Uther. And, and, and then the forging of the swords and all these other weapons from the burning stone, right? And then um, we get um, the Eagle's Brood, which tells us of Merlin and Uther's childhood friendship and, and when they're teenagers when they go off to war together and the beginnings of um merlin's perceived magic which is all just trickery right and then we get uther which is about uther and merlin again and the birth of king arthur and then we get the saxon shore where king arthur is just growing up as a kid and following in Merlin's footsteps and in Uther's footsteps and all of the players start to come into, you know, all of the people start to like the Guinevere's and everybody that just all, all the chess pieces are starting to get set. And then we get Fort at Rivers Bend and the Sorcerer, which is now it's like Uther and Merlin are gone. And, and now it's just Arthur and Lancelot and all of the Knights of the Round Table and the Holy Grail and the Excalibur and all the battles. And then we get to the Lance Thrower, which is about, um, Lancelot, and then the eagle. Oh, it's ten books of, ten books of King Arthur, just genius, pure genius. You know, I reviewed uh, Bernard Cornwell's um, Camelot series over here, you know, the um, 
the Winter King and the Enemy of God and Excalibur and things like that. Which is, I think, is the best retelling of Camelot. The second best and just almost tied with Bernard Cornwell of these Jack White books. Which start with The Burning Stone. And it's fun. I mean, you don't really need to read the first three books, really, because they're not really about the King Arthur story. They're about his grandparents and stuff. And all of the events that lead up to what happens in the King Arthur story. Although, I would suggest, why wouldn't you want to read them? Because they're damn fucking cool. Burning Stone, Sky Stone, The Singing Sword. I mean, you get it. You get it. What is the singing sword? Well, of course, it's Excalibur. And, I mean, you know, it all makes sense. But this is, again, this is, I mean, the, 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 he started this series back in 1991. Ten books later, this one just came out. And it's the prequel to all of it. It's like the, like I said, he never, he didn't write any of these in order. But I've got them stacked in order here. The way you'd want to read them. Oh, and then when I found out that he had another one coming, that this was, I was so excited because, you know, he does, it's, he's about four or five years between books when he writes these things. I mean, they don't, he just doesn't write them like that. So when I found out that the 10th book was coming out and it was actually a uh, prequel up here, and he's got room at the end of the series to keep going. Like he can still, I mean, this, he can keep it going. And I hope he does. I hope he does. I hope every four or five years we get a new one that just keeps this story moving. Burning Stone. The Burning Stone. I don't think it's the best one. In the, I think that some of these in the middle are the very best when we start talking of Uther, Moorland, and King. But, I mean, they, these are all, like, top-notch. This one is at least, though, a, a good 8.0 out of 10. The Burning Stone. God, I hope that made sense. I hope the whole review made sense. We're going to get to another novel called The Burning Stone here soon.